Ali Hassan is a stand-up comic, actor, and professional chef. He's the host of CBC's Canada Reads, as well as Laugh Out Loud. He's a frequent guest host of Q. He's a Canadian Comedy Awards nominee. He's performed at uh, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. He's been in films, TV. Most recently, CBC's Run the Burbs. He lives here in the Toronto area with his family. And he is now an author. His first book, Is There Bacon in Heaven, uh, has been published by Simon and Schuster. You remember the first time you ate bacon? I remember the first time I ate pepperoni for sure. Bacon, yeah. I, I have to. Okay, tell me the pepperoni story. Well, pepperoni was, uh, it was always at school. And I, I talk about this on stage. I talk about this in, in, in the book. It was like every time you stayed after school, pizza arrived. What kind of pizza? Pepperoni. Every single time. Nobody asked about your religious background, your ethnic, uh, you know, any liabilities you have, any uh, allergy report. Nobody cared. This is in Quebec? This is Quebec. Okay. This is the 80s. Yeah. And so pepperoni would always arrive. And I was taught as a Muslim kid, you got to remove the pepperoni. You don't eat pepperoni. But I'm giving it to my white friends. So they're getting double pepperoni and they're super happy. They're like joyful. And I'm looking at them with some level of like envy, you know, because it's like I've been told there's one God, you know, there's just one God. Not There's not like a Jewish God and then a Christian God. There's just the one guy, uh, guy at the time, very, very male, obviously. <laughs> yeah. yeah, at the time, I mean, there was no other, uh, you know, he was like modeled after Zeus and Fabio and stuff. So... um I'm like, I don't, why would the same God give them a pass, but not give me a pass? And uh, so I was very like, you know, as a glutton and and the fatso that I was, I was like, one day I'm going to try this. Like, this is crazy. I I can't keep making white people happy like this. What about me? I I deserve happiness, you know? So, but one of my buddies uh, was a Muslim guy. And for him, it was like, there's no way, you know, I just, he was so, so he was like a practicing Muslim. He would fast from sun up to sundown for 30 days in like Montreal, July heat. He would play basketball while he was fasting. So his commitment to the religion was so strong. I couldn't just, you know, flippantly try a piece of pepperoni in front of that guy. So you have to wait till like there's no Muslims around. You have to wait. And so, you know, I was 16 and it was it would have been grade 11, um, grade 10 or grade 11 is when I first tried pepperoni on pizza at school. And I was like, this is everything I hoped it would be. Wow. That's crazy. My first time was June 1990. June 1990. Good year. June 1990. Okay. I went went to a concert with a buddy. We went to see, get this lineup, Exhibition Stadium, mm. Warrant, yeah. The Black love, Crows. I love it already. Okay. Metallica Ooh. and Aerosmith. I know you don't like Aerosmith, but Aerosmith. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't dislike Aerosmith. <laughs> I dislike Guns N' Roses. Okay. Not their oh. music, but oh, sure. I, gotta I have a, well, I have a connect a story connected to yours. Let's hear this okay. exhibition. St- so, yeah. so I don't know if you went to this concert because I know you like the 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 uh, the big hair rock sound, but I went. went uh, a friend of mine, I'm in Rashid and myself, went to this concert, and we were starving. And you know the people going up and down, selling the pizza, selling the hot dogs, <laughs> and they only had pepperoni pizza but we were hungry and so we said listen it's, it's god will forgive us because we're starving kids yeah. we, we need to eat and and that was my first time I, I now i never ate it and said oh my goodness what have i been missing yeah but uh the summer before the pandemic uh or maybe it was two summers before we took a road trip Okay, so you never ate it again between 1990 Exhibition Stadium until... Yeah, uh, you know what? I can't say that. I, I can't say I can't say that I had the same long-distance love affair. Okay. With with Bay, was it, you know, it's like, to me, I'm different than you. You're like a foodie. Mm-hmm. I just eat to survive. Right. You're one right? of those um, guys, right? Okay. But I, but I love to eat. I just, like, my belly needs to be full yeah. all, all the time. Right. Um, 
But yeah, so that's that's yeah. an interesting thing. My my belly is smaller consequence, even though my belly looks very full all the time. My belly is of smaller consequence than my mouth. Ah, I hear you. Like your eyes see big, and then you just can't finish. I uh, do you know Salad King in Toronto? Oh my goodness, yes. So, so Salad King, you know, I've been having their pad thai for many years on young street they got a new location at a queen street location i see it i'm like oh let me get something and then i'm like you know what i won't get the pad thai because i gotta eat I, I gotta drive and eat my whole you know so it's gonna be an issue with the noodles and the driving and i have to get the scarborough so i get this um evil jungle curry it's called sounds exciting as is hell. this on the menu it's on the menu yeah eggplant corn peppers this that i get it five on 20. their hottest is 20. you never go 20. you never go above 10 to be quite honest and i've been i've done i've done the the, the tour i will save everybody by saying don't go over 10. it's just it's painful it gets really crazy so uh i get the five i don't need to be sweating on my drive here and um dude it was the blandest thing it was it was serving the purpose. It was serving the purpose. It was filling my belly. But that was of zero consequence. I was like searching through my car for a packet of salt. I was like um, opening my glove compartment. I was like, maybe I have like a hot sauce or a soy sauce packet lying around, nothing. And uh, I was really upset for like a few hours afterwards. Yeah. And I, I love uh, Salad King and I'll give them the full respect. But that curry, somebody was, somebody was, it was 1130. It was before the lunch momentum started. So I don't even know. Like, I, I, I don't know. I was, I was super, I was so sad. Hours, hours. We had. Uh, so, okay. Tell me about before yeah. the pandemic. I'm sorry to interrupt so, yeah, you. Yeah, no, no, no. No, that's like fine. <clears throat> um, I, I, before I go that, like, how were you, how were your parents as you were growing up with bacon? N not permitted in the house permitted. And, you okay. know, and, and permitted is too strong a word it was like just it didn't come you know and my father would would be like oh, i'll have a caesar salad please and then it comes with bacon bits and my dad's like oh no i don't uh, i don't need bacon and then they'd be like but sir you didn't tell me you didn't want bacon he's like i didn't know it was coming and they'd be like well it always comes with bacon it's a caesar salad it says that bacon he's like well i'm not going to eat i can't eat and i'd be like you know, the amount of beer and you know, <laughs> that whiskey you you've had this week. I, I just don't understand what we're really, really. And I was always like that. I was like, there's this, you know, I would call it a hypocrisy at the time. My friends would call it an inconsistency. And, you know, I was taught from day one Sunday school. And I spent a long time in Sunday school. I was just not progressing in that school at all. I spent 10 years, age five to age 15, I was in Sunday school. And uh, finally, they just let me go. Just mercy. Just, Get out of here. You know, yeah. Um, good luck in your future endeavors. That was the first of many letters I was to get that said good luck. In <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I was taught from day one. And this stuck with me because I was like, I, I'm going to need this. God is kind. God is merciful. God is forgiving. Those three things, God is kind, God is merciful, God is forgiving. And I loved it. I loved the rhythm of it. I loved hearing it. I knew I was going to do things later in life that would require God's forgiveness and mercy. And so, you know, looking at myself sort of, uh, you know, a profit and loss statement, what, what do you call this? You know, like, uh, you know, weighing, weighing who I am here, I would be like, I'm not. I'm not actually a bad person. I'm not stealing from anybody. I'm not harming anyone deliberately. I'm not. If God is kind and God is merciful, one certainly hopes that it'll be like, all right, this guy, he had this little vice. He needed to eat pork from time to time. You know, it's not like a daily thing. It's like when you can and when the mood is right and when there's no other Muslim friends around who'll be horrified by me, that's when I would do it. And uh, this guy drinks, okay, well, you know, when, when my time comes, my hope was that a kind, merciful God, if he does indeed exist, and I, and I always thought God did exist, or some version of, you know, a supreme being existed, then that forgiveness should really be like, what did I, how did I harm anyone, you know, but...
I have these questions, these discussions with other people and they're like, but, but God asks this of you and God asks so little of you and provides so much in return, right? This is the arguments of the, of the more religious. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just not seeing it that way. I'm very grateful to God for everything I have. I'm very grateful to the universe for everything I have, but, um, I, I hope there'll be a blind eye turned. If, I hear if, you. If there is a, a day of judgment, you know. I hear you. Um, my parents like there's no drinking, there's no smoking, there's no pork or bacon. You know, there's uh, going to Jamaat kind of. You know, back when I was a kid, it was like every day, daily, S- not seven, just Fridays, seven days a week. Oh wow! Uh, it was you know Saturday morning religious classes. Um, although I love your foot hockey story. Yeah, in Sunday school, sure. Oh, Friday, we'd, we'd leave the Jamaat kind of, you know, back in the school hall. Vanier, you remember Vanier High School, Peanut Plaza? I don't know if you know that area. This is in uh, North York. Um, no, buddy, I'm from Montreal. That's right. I just realized as, as I'm oh, saying yeah. this. But um, foot hockey, you know, down the hallways with the lockers yeah. and, the, and the Coke machines and uh, the doors where the goalie nets. I loved, loved that story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fast forward to a few summers ago. We're taking this trip. Uh, we end up in Quebec City. We're going to the Gaspé eventually and back. Um, beautiful part of the country. My parents happened to be in Ottawa or Montreal for a wedding that got canceled because of a death. They say, hey, what hotel are you staying at? We're staying in the small hotel in, uh, in old Quebec City. And I said, yeah, there's another room here. Why don't you come over? Well, mm. you know, you're with your son as well. It's a but family yeah, with thing. my son, my wife, it's just the three yeah. of us. My parents yeah. are in a different city. It's great. They come to join us for a couple of days. And whenever we travel, we try to have something local, right? So we book this dinner at a uh, at a traditional Quebec restaurant. Hmm. My son and I get there early, and. You know, in, in places, sometimes they'll give you some bread, you know, before you eat. You know, here's some bread, here's some olive oil or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, some butter. Some places they'll give you chips, peanuts. They gave us chips in this Quebec restaurant. And my son and I start to eat it, and it is the most delicious chips, mm. Ali, that, that I've ever had. My wife, Minaz, comes. She sits down. She sees me eating this chips. She goes, are you supposed to be eating that? I go... It's chips. She's got this. I don't think those are really chips. I go, they're chips. They're crunchy. They taste good. They, they got to be chips. <laughs> my, my, you know where I'm going with this. My dad and my mom come in. My dad went to school in England, uh, culinary studies. Wow. Okay. He comes in. He sits down, and my mom's there. They're seeing me gobble these chips, and my dad says what are you eating? I said, chips. He goes, those are not chips. I go, what are you not? They're not chips. Those are pork rinds. Oh, pork rinds? What the heck are pork rinds? I go, no, 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 they're chips. The waiter comes by. My mom is starting to get furious. Uh, What are these? Pork rinds. She gives me the dirtiest look. Ali, I'm in my 40s. Yeah, yeah. yeah, (laughs) She gives me the dirtiest look. Take these away. And she looks at me and go, but they were so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. And and that's uh that moment and the moment at Exhibition Stadium are 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 so um powerful in my mind because of who your parents are. Um, you know, from a religious perspective, seven days a week at the uh, at the mosque at the Jamaat Khan. I mean, that's 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 a huge moment for you, both at sixteen and eating in front of your parents. In in my experience, you know, I was when I say I was wrestling with this this inconsistency of like, why does my dad drink but can't have pork? And I was probably, you know, I was less than twenty. I was probably still in my teens. 18, 19, still a little old for this act of rebellion, but I uh, order a pepperoni pizza to the house. I'm going to, I'm going to have it in the house. I'm going to do it. And my mother loses her mind. We don't have pork in this house. And I go, well, why do we have alcohol? She goes, I don't want alcohol in this house either. 
I don't want that either. Your father is stubbornly brings it. I told him no alcohol in his house. So then my father has to come over. My father, God bless him, just a, just a, just a, a sea of reason, you know, and logic. He goes, listen, Ali, beta. I do drink, you know. There are times that I wish I didn't. We're South Asian. We're Pakistani. We have this genetic disposition to heart disease. As you know, I had angina when I was 50. and this. So, you know, if there's one thing you cannot eat that is, you know, known not to be good for you, it is, you know, the pork is, you know, it's fatty and the sodium, all this kind of stuff. It's not good for you. If you can keep that out of your diet, you can only benefit from that. And he leaves just like that. And he ruined a really good pepperoni. <laughs> he ruined the hell out of that thing, man. I was like, God damn it. I mean, I probably ate it anyway. I don't yeah. think I'm throwing it out. But I didn't enjoy it because I was like, ah, such good rationale. You know, yeah. the lunacy of my mother. I've been experiencing that since a young age. I could I could do anything in the face of that. Yeah. My mother was all, you know, like, you know, how it is like. When you get yelled at all the time by the same person in the same voice, it loses its 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 impact. Mm -hmm. But my father just occasionally just come with a little bit of wisdom, and then I'm like, oh, "God damn it, <laughs> damn it!" Sucks. Yeah, you gotta you gotta listen to that. Yeah. Um, I love the story of your son's name. Mm -hmm. uh, does he have? Is it so? It's it's Maz. Maz, Maz. Maz. In fact. So it's yeah. Maz. And so pronunciation of names is really interesting. So even your name, Ali, Ali, like, what do you prefer? I'll tell you, I hear, I love hearing the word Ali out of your mouth. Okay. I like that. All right. But, you know, I work for CBC Radio and it's a place that is trying to be very sensitive. Uh, it's, it's, it's a different people's cultures and. You know, somebody will hear something about names, you know, people taking back their names and. So I've had it a few times where people who I work with or who are bosses, Ali, have I been pronouncing your name incorrectly this whole time? I'm like, it's okay. It's fine. No, no. But I would like to pronounce it the way, you know, I should be pronouncing it. I'm like, I, I, I don't even know how to answer what that is. And then they're like, no, but how would your, how would your mother say it? And I don't want someone, a white woman who's my boss saying, Ali. And I'm like, what? Am I in trouble? What happened? I, what is it? What did I do this time? I don't need that from a... You know what I mean? So the name is... And I've known this for a long time. Like people who, 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 don't, who aren't familiar with the name or the culture, you could never imagine a three-letter word would be so loaded. It's, you know, from a young age, I'm Ali or Ali or like Muhammad Ali. That's the... You know, they had... They saw Ali, so I'm Ali. Um, so there's, you know, there's an emphasis on the, uh, on a different syllable as they say, but then I was also called Al by some people I love. My buddy, Zach, his mother used to call me Al and she was a loving, gregarious woman. And Al became associated with this positive, you know, it would be like, Al, I made you a chocolate cake. You're going to love, you know, what I mean? like it was always good stuff coming from Mrs. Moose after the Al. Al, why don't you join us for dinner? And so Al is great. So how can I be Al and Ali at the same time? And as I said, Ali is so Pakistani and Indian, and, and, and I accept that from people. But the name is originally an Arabic name. So you, do you know how to pronounce the actual name Ali in, in the Middle East? Ali, Ali. As we say, roll, roll the G. Ali, Ali. It's, a, it's not, the first letter of the Arabic alphabet is Aleph. But my name doesn't start with Aleph. It doesn't start with the A, the first letter of the alphabet in Arabic. It starts with the An, which is a different letter. And An is a guttural A, so my name is actually Ali. So Arabs would be like, why do you call yourself Ali? Your name is not Ali, it's Ali. And I'm like, listen, <clears throat> I'm already dry heaving from this little <laughs> rehearsal. I don't, I just, I can't, I can't be connected to that. I, I don't know what to tell you. Can you imagine slowing somebody down and be like, no, 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 you'll mispronounce my name. It's actually, you have to roll the G and no, 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 more guttural. More, that's a lot of wasted hours of my life trying to get, so I just, just like, hey man, whatever. And you know, one time I, 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 I still can't remember what he said, but I was at, there's a college in, on the South shore of Montreal called Champlain College. 
and I'm auditioning to be one of the DJs in the college. And it's all you do is you, you're the DJ, you have this big glass booth, and you're the DJ for the band ring. And the band ring is like this mini amphitheater. They got pool tables there. They got some maybe video games, just a place to chill at the center, literally the hub. Students will come there, chill out, maybe eat there and leave the band ring. <clears throat> And so all you, 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 you're not broadcast anywhere. You are just the DJ for the band ring. And I'm auditioning, and uh, they're like, okay, you're up. So you, they just have 15-minute slots, everybody auditions. And I go, uh, okay, hey, uh, what's up, everybody? My name is uh, Ali, or you can call me Ali, or I mean, you can call me whatever you want. And somebody, you can hear, it wasn't very soundproof, somebody goes, all right, asshole, or something. Like I can't remember what he said, but he said something. All right, dick. And I was like, yeah, I, I walked into that. I said, you can call me. And I remember I look up and this girl is elbowing this guy. Like, don't. He's like, what? He said he could call, I could call him whatever he wants. Um, so I should have learned that lesson early. That one stuck with me for a long time where like, no, no, no. State your name exactly as you want to be called, right? I've learned the lesson. Don't say whatever you want. Tell people this is how it's pronounced. And yet still, I cannot bring myself to be like, you know what? This is the priority and this is how you should say it. There are actually, and you know, I had this con this conversation with Hassan Minhaj once. Okay. I'm That's interviewing right. yeah. him for, uh, for, for Q. And he was saying that, you know, a lot of people say Hassan Minhaj, but it's Hassan Minhaj. And he walked Ellen DeGeneres back. He goes, let me tell you how it's He oh. goes, we're, we're driving home later. My dad is horrified. Why on national television would you stop and walk back Ellen DeGeneres to pronounce your name? This is the father of Hassan Minhaj who named him. <laughs> right? This is the man who named him, said, why did you waste this? And Hassan is like, it's important. And in my mind, it's like, I get it is, it's just not that important for me. Yeah. I w you know, for me, the big win, the big, big win was my, more my identity and, and, and coming to terms with the fact that I'm a cultural Muslim and really embracing that term of being a cultural Muslim was, was the biggest deal for me. Because that was another thing, like I'm Ali, I'm Ali, I'm Ali, I'm, you know, all these names. And then people go, are you Muslim? And I go, I had a different answer for everybody, right? Everybody gets a corny, like, Muslim, uh, you know, come see, come saw, or are you Muslim? Well, it depends who's asking, uh, are you Muslim? Uh, you know, more of like a freelance Muslim, you know, I, I, call, I get called in on the weekend sometimes. But everybody had a jokey answer for me about and, and it would bother me, like, that's like a basic question about my identity that I don't even know how to answer. And it bothered me for years. So when I came to terms with the fact, borrowing from the, the, the idea of, like, the cultural Jews and these Jewish friends who tell me they're cultural Jews, and the confidence they had when they said it, even though their definition of a cultural Jew varied vastly from one to the next, uh, I was like, this is it. This is it. My catering, I make food from Muslim countries and I showcase that food. My comedy on stage directly, directly connected to my identity. I talk about it on stage. Uh, my the sketches we were writing were all about like Muslim trials and tribulations. There's no extracting my Muslim identity. But cultural Muslim. So, and then I realized, you know, in the writing of this book, my dad was the OG cultural Muslim. He would have never used that term, maybe, but he he sent money back to this religious peer back in Pakistan. He was, you know, very respectful of everyone who practiced, and most of his family does, did, and and still does. But he didn't practice, but music was all like, you know, deep in the culture and writings. It was third world fiction with an emphasis on like the South Asian writers. And so uh, culturally, he was connected to Pakistan and South Asia, but definitely also Islam. And Qawwali was a big thing, which is, you know, the Sufi Muslim, Muslim Sufi uh, influenced music. And he was, he was big into that. So 
um, that's a bigger win for me. That's that that for me matters more than if somebody goes Ali. But but it's interesting <laughs> to sometimes be with three different friends. Yeah. And one guy's calling me Ali. Yeah. And they've called me Ali their whole life. And 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 there's some other guy who's like a childhood friend who's a brown guy going Ali. And some other guys going Ali. Like U H L E E Ali. Ali and Ali are all being said by the same group of people and I'm a I'm a I'm a connector. I like to I like friends from different walks of life, people who I love to all meet each other. And it's the greatest thrill when I get a text from a friend, my buddy Raul, who I met in my MBA program, hanging out with my buddy Q in Dubai together. I'm like, dude, amazing. You know, it's not like I did this, but it's like I wanted to see this. These two people should be hanging out and getting along. Um, but it's funny to hear the different pronunciations and sometimes i'm like i'm like waiting for a couple of my buddies to be like why does this guy keep calling you ali what the heck is an ali what are you talking about <laughs> uh so this is just like part and parcel of yeah. uh, who i am I, I i don't see a i don't see a future in my life <laughs> <laughs> where I stop people and correct them and go, actually, it's yeah. pronounced this way. And I have no issue with anybody who does that. Yeah. Because you feel that connection to the name and what that name sure. means to you. For me, I have a connection to so many different versions of this, of the pronunciation. That's fantastic. As long as people are talking to me, you know, yeah. that's what's important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is so interesting. Um, so, at, you know, being a father, do you... You know, you're, you're sort of, you know, the role model. You're you're the 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 rule of law. Uh, you are, you know, a, a main factor in whether you know these four kids under your roof succeed in life or not. Um, <laughs> how you know what sort of decisions are are your kids making about whether it's something as simple as how they name themselves or you know how they correct or don't correct what they eat what they drink mm. whether they go to mosque or sunday school you know how is that whole conversation going with you well we screwed them over pretty good in a, in a couple of ways um with my daughters who are now 19 and 17 you know we had the conversation my wife and i um many years ago we were talking about Sunday school, sending them to Sunday school. But I, you know, as it is, you know, I always think about when I went for driving lessons and I got my license and how I would be like, hey, dad, you didn't check your blind spot properly. But, and he would be like, which is basically you son of a bitch. I've been driving for 30 plus years, okay? You don't have to tell me about not checking my blind spot. So I would joke with my wife about like, we're going to send our kids to Islamic school and they're going to come back and be like, you're doing this, you're not doing this. We also don't do this. And how come we don't pray? And I'm like, we're going to get, we got to be ready for that. So right away, we're sending our kids to Sunday school from a place of fear. Already that's bad. Then somebody goes, but why do you want to send your kids to Sunday school? And my answer was, well, I had to suffer through it. They should suffer through it. And again, that's bad. That's not a good reason to send kids here. Thirdly, certain types of Sunday school, there's a lot that are very religious, very religious. And they would, they would, you know, be inclined to tell us like, hey, your kid should wear hijab all the time. How come they only cover their hair when they're in Islamic school? Should You know, and I, I'm not prepared to have those discussions with an adult about my daughter's own choices. Right. I'm I they, they would find a very angry response from me. You don't get to decide what my daughter does. You they will decide. Right. So that's you know, I'm getting riled up about that. Then my buddy, Aslam, may he rest in peace forever. He tells me there's a school, newer school in um, in Scarborough. It's great. That's where we're sending our kids. We go, OK, cool. All right, so this is a good school, like this kind of in line with my own thinking, which is a little more you know, pro progressive and liberal. Where is it, Scarborough? Okay, so then we're like in the West End, and it's like my wife's like, okay, so we're going to take them every Sunday, but do you want to like, so will we come back? Will we stay there? Do you want to stay in Scarborough? you want to go to Scarborough every Sunday and stay there for this many hours? And we were like, 
No, no, not really. Don't really want to do that. <laughs> and then that was it. That was the end of the Sunday school. That was the end. So that was the end of it. It was just too many bad reasons for why we were sending them and our own reluctance. So it's like clearly we don't really want to send them. However, the issue now is, you know, my wife and I assume our kids know certain basic things. And they don't. And when they don't, we're shocked. But why are we shocked? They don't teach religion in school. I feel like religion, where whether I practice or not, has been such has had a, a, a you know historically speaking alone. Never mind right now. It's its current role with so many different people and cultures and how it's shaping, um, you know, current politics and and, uh, and 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 various movements and you know religion plays a great role contemporary, but historically how important religion has been in shaping the civilization we live in. It should be taught. It should be taught. But it was taken out of schools. Unless you're in a, unless you're in a Catholic school, religion is not taught. So my kids know nothing. My kids know nothing. Like, not even the basic stuff. So, And that's on us. That's on my wife and I. Because we should have realized they weren't going to learn anything in school. So it was up to us to send them to some religious school or Sunday school. So we've left them out to dry a little bit. You know, it's like I'm a cultural Muslim and I'm very content with who I am, but I can't give that to kids. You know, I, it took me many years and many different experiences, good and bad, to come to this thing about like, this is who I am. So this book is very much this explanation of like, this is who raised me. This is who I am. This is who's raising you. It's a little bit of a love letter to my children. And I'm like, look. I'm not I'm not perfect by any means. This is who I am. This is what I believe. And you can take some of this. You can take a whole new thing. It's it's all yours to discover the the, the world of religion. Um but the reason you didn't get the, you know, instruction from a religious lens is in this book basically. And uh, so, you know, I'm open to them discovering. And I, I hope, you know, my my 11-year-old has always been by every teacher saying he's very curious. I hope he never loses that curious spark. And so we're always looking like, did he lose it? Did he lose it? What about this week? What about this month? Has he lost it? And no, he's very, very curious. And, you know, you see it in so many different arenas. Like, if you continuously feed a kid, you know, Archie comic digest or other kind, that's kind of going to be their thing. But if you continuously be, you know, so from time to time, my wife and I are like, okay, well, let's watch a documentary. And I'm not really in the mood maybe for that documentary that time. You know, I was, like, ah, I was hoping to just whatever, like eat a slice of pizza and watch old school or something I'm like ah, oh, documentary. But then I see my, my kids, the younger guys, especially just perk up and be like, Oh my God, can we rewind that part? And they're so interested. And you remember, like, this is your responsibility as an adult. This is your responsibility. Feed them. You know, it, it's, it's no different from food. You can give them processed food. You can give them chicken fingers. You're still feeding them. But are you feeding them well? Same thing goes for their mind. You can give them like, hey, man, you got to watch this movie. This is a movie that was hilarious. It's called uh, Blades of Glory. You know, it's called Talladega Nights. You guys got to watch this with me. But are you giving them good nourishment? Now, we got a lot of joy in this house out of Talladega Nights and Nacho Libre, and we continue to get that joy. Oh, good, good. But I think it's important to also give them a good diet of like, yeah. here's something very, you know, the other day, you just forget sometimes. The other day, I just kind of turn on the TV and it turns on to CBC television and it's a Nature of Things episode. David Suzuki, the great David Suzuki, Nature of Things. It's an episode called Kids versus Screens. And it got me in real quick, talking about how there's a correlation between screen time and lack of empathy. And he's saying the same way, you know, the, the, the you know, young lion cubs or bear cubs are, you know, they wrestle with each other. This is an important part of their formation, understanding their strength, understanding how far they can push, understanding how they can be taken advantage of and the working of their own muscles and limbs and all that. With children, interacting with other children and interacting with other human beings also builds these basic 
um, you know, ways of thinking and these these blocks, this foundation is built when you interact with other children. And when you don't have that, your empathy, you know, slides and slides. So, and some of these kids got 10 hours of screen time a day and they're looking at them being, you know, basically you're creating sociopaths. So I was like... <laughs> I, I, whatever I had to do, I kind of like, I think I had to go to my in-laws and I call, I texted my wife. I was like, I'm going to be late. Cause I was like, I can't, I can't leave. This is amazing. And so you get these reminders from time to time. Like there's so much interesting stuff out there that we can learn from. Let's make sure that, Hey, the blue Jays are great. And yeah, we'll watch the game together, but let's balance that out with some learning. So, uh, you know, I mean, it's a very roundabout way to, to, to answer your question. I don't have enough I don't have enough um, interest in religion to be like, let's also, guys, guys, every day at four o'clock, let's just do 15 minutes of religion, right? Whereas I would go every day for 15 minutes at dinner, let's speak French. You're all taking French. Let's have some, you know, I'm, I'm inclined. I'm motivated to do that. That doesn't bother me. Religion is like, oh, I got to learn a whole bunch of stuff myself first before I teach them anything. So... This is what I mean by we've left them out to dry when it comes to religion. Well, I think with on the religious side, maybe you sit down and you watch, you know, season one, two, coming up season three of Rami. Hmm. Uh, you, yeah. could, you could take them through season one of Mo on Netflix. Uh, Buddy Mo, maybe. I know Rami, uh, there's a scene in a car with a with a woman that I, I don't think well, my children need to see that. At well, the girls are old. Listen. I, the girls love Rami. The girls love Rami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My uncle, my, Uncle Dave Mahesh is in Rami. Uncle, you know, so is they he were, uncle now to your kid? That's amazing. He's got to be. He's got to be. That's my boy, man. That's my boy. Uh, him in his shorts. I don't know what's going on with that. Ooh. <laughs> I love it. Ooh. <laughs> they are just too close to underwear. Those shorts, <laughs> aren't they? Yeah. Um, Ali, this this has been fantastic. I love speaking with you. Thank you so much, always, for being generous with your time. You bet, bud. Uh, the book. It. Uh, I, I don't think there's an answer, but the question is, is there bacon uh, in heaven? Simon & Schuster, get it everywhere that you can get books. It is on sale now. It's been out for a week. Congratulations. Right. Thank you, bud. Uh, on this, looking forward to the next one, which I'm, I'm hearing is a music <laughs> book about music. <laughs> rock, you you rock gave me a good idea. You gave me a good idea. I just don't know. I don't yeah, know how to do I hear it. You. What are you pulling out there? Nothing but a good time. And who wrote that? Uh, these are uh, Tom Bozier okay. and Richard Beinstock. It's literally all about the uncensored, here it says here, the uncensored history of the 80s hard rock I love explosion. It. I love it. I yeah, was yeah, so yeah. deep into that. Oh, yeah. Big, big fat. My love, big my fat love for Poison and Motley Crue was... Uh, Cinderella. Cinderella was great. <laughs> I just said Warren too. It's like Warren. I forgot about Warren. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I knew there was a fourth. I, I actually had to Google it. What was that fourth band that was at that mm. at that concert? Um, thank you so much, buddy. Enjoy your Thanksgiving uh, holiday. There's no no bacon. I don't think no, Thanksgiving is there this weekend. So this weekend we keep it clean. You're good. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Have a great one. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank take, you so much, crew. Take care. Bye.